Hello everybody and welcome back to Geisersburg. So it's another one of those really misty mornings and we actually do have a bit of field work to do to begin with. We have a field of potatoes which needs to be harvested and to do this job we're going to have to lease the big potato harvester. But the thing which I'm really looking forward to in this job is actually not the harvesting itself but the carting because I have just downloaded a trailer which was released on ModHub yesterday and it looks pretty good. So of course we're going to be taking a look at that in just a minute, but to begin with, this is the field, field number 31. It's not very big, it's not going to take too long to do this, and uh, well, I'm going to be doing the carting, Chainsaw is going to be doing the harvesting. So let's prepare the potato harvester just here. We can both head to the field in the potato harvester, because we do have the universal passenger script installed, so or the passenger mod installed, so I think we will begin. £26,000. I don't think we're going to have that sort of return. Frustratingly. Because Farming Simulator has the most ridiculous leasing fees ever. Right, how do I get in? Uh, passenger. Left, shift, and Z. There we go. Just about made it. He was pretty desperate to go. Okay, so if, if it crashes, it's not me. <laughs> uh, I, I always crash. It's quite cosy in here, isn't it? Very cosy. What am I sat on? It, does, it actually does have a little passenger seat, uh, which is a nice idea. So yeah, we can take in the sights as we travel through this very tight village. Oh, there I am, look. I'm, I'm scrunched up in the corner. Yeah, we've already established that we, uh, we only get the fog or the mist if you're the person hosting the server. If you're the person joining the server, you don't actually get it, I don't think. At least Chainsaw didn't get it, so... Um, it really does look incredible. Hopefully my bit rate is set high, en high enough to be able to show this off properly. But to me, it looks incredible. Yeah, this map is quite something when it comes to this. I think other maps do have the fog. I've seen the mist on even Felsburn, I think. But um, no, it just seems to really stand out on this map. It, it, it is uh, quite something. Right, so no Roger Beans this field before. It's just around the corner, and I will then show you the trailer because, well, I don't think this is going to fill up very quickly. We're going to have a bit of uh, time to uh, just stand around and look at things whilst it fills up. But then, once it is full, once the trailer is full, we're going to have to cast it to the sell point. So I'm going to jump out here. How do you open this door? Same way as we got in. Yes, it's very atmospheric. So there we go. Yep, Chainsaw is just going to start work there. And this is the trailer. It is a really nice dump trailer. It is on a very small tractor. Chainsaw just brought it down here because that tractor was already at the store and so was the trailer. So I don't know. It actually doesn't look... It doesn't look too big for it. It's like on the limit, I suppose. We could give it a go, see how it performs. But uh, no, the, the 313, it's not, a, it's not a big tractor at all. So I'm going to show you it in the store because it is going to be much easier to do that. In the showroom, I should say. But I, I just think it looks good. So here we go. If you do want it, by the way, just check the trailer category on Mod Have you'll find it straight away. You can choose between red and yellow, so you can have uh, a, a red one if you want to. I, I didn't see actually what was uh, happening here, but I don't think the chassis colour change was working. Because it does say chassis, and well, I select red and it doesn't do that, so I'm guessing that needs to be patched. But you can also change the wheels, and you can change the decal colour, and you can also put a box on the side as well. So it is the uh, Lizard Orm TP240. Now eventually we're going to figure out exactly how quickly this machine fills up, but from memory I think it's about, well, every five, five, ten minutes? We will see. Okay, I was very wrong. It has filled up very quickly. It is already basically 90% full. He's only gone round once. 
So, am I going to have my work cut out here? Wheel unload going down the side. I didn't actually check and see what the capacity of the trailer is, but I don't think we're going to be able to keep up. I think this might fill it. Then again, whenever I say I think, I'm always wrong, so no, uh, no, that is actually filling up very rapidly. <laughs> I think we're going to be struggling. We might have to get two of these. Oh no, no, that's good. That is only 62% full. So, um, we'll unload again over on that side. Then we're going to head off to wherever the best place is. It's not a big field, so it's not even going to take too long. So, potatoes, land handle. And that must be up here, I would imagine. Yes, okay, so I think the easiest way to go is just back past the store and I should eventually find it. I don't know why this piece here hasn't fully grown yet because that wasn't actually put in by us. We didn't, we didn't plant this field, so that's weird. Right, just about get underneath there. And this will likely fill it. 86%. It's a good chunky tray. It's got these big flotation tyres on it. It's even got a beacon. I am guessing that the modder is French. And potentially called Orm, unless that's the trailer manufacturer. I've never heard of Orm trailers, but it could be uh, a French brand or something. In fact, no, I'm not going to just guess stuff. I'm going to go and look it up. Hmm, not too sure. I typed in Orm trailers, couldn't find anything. The modder is called 76 Max, so uh, I don't know. It could be a, a fictional name, not too sure. I'm sure some of my viewers will be able to shed some light on that. Right, which gets this full to the top. Get it up to 100%. And then we can see how good this tractor is at climbing hills. Okay, right, at 17,000 litres. Um, it is going to be interesting to see if it can climb the hill. I wouldn't really expect it to. Not at any decent speed anyway. I'm overloading the poor thing. Come on in little fan. Let's see how much power you've got. Let's keep you going. Put it onto cruise control. <laughs> trying to tell it to do 26. It's not going to do that. So far so good. We have the traction. It's got the uh, wheel weights as well. So traction won't be the issue. Engine horsepower will be. I'm just trying to think if it gets any steeper. I think it does get a bit steeper. Anyway, yeah, it looks good. It's a, it's a decent setup that we have here. 12 miles per hour as well. I'm impressed. I will have to check and see what horsepower this tractor is. I, I didn't think it was much, but. Um, yes, I think it might be. I think it might be something quite good. 150 maybe? Well, look at that. 19 uphill. Spoke too soon, but no, it is still doing really well. This is our steepest part. Well, that's fine. Couldn't com I can't complain at that speed. It's a heavy load. Right, so through the narrow area, our trailer is quite wide. With those flotation tyres. This is the pinch point, and there's my beacon of light just lifting up above the buildings. Is it this one here? I think it must be. Uh, well, we get there somehow, probably through here. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so yeah, we're not going to be looking at any kind of substantial money here. These are potatoes, after all. But if you have a big enough field, they are worth it. This really was just to try out the trailer. It is a trailer which I would quite like to have on Sandy Bay. 
anyway, there we go. 8,831. Is this a loop? Can we get out of here? I think we might be able to. Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll take it back to Chainsaw so we can unload because he's bound to be full and then we will take a look at the horsepower of the tractor but I'm going to say 150 at a guess. All of you fans will be saying, oh we already know. Uh, wait, 3,729 harvest income. He must have taken another trailer. Or did he... he might, oh no, he might have done something else. Because uh, he's down at the farm. Well, we'll go and find out. So that's where he's got to. I don't really like doing the big fields because uh, it takes so long to do. But a field like this is perfect for root crops. Yeah, I'm talking about root crops. If we're doing cereals and stuff, the bigger the field the better. So this is going to probably fill our trail to about 70%. Okay, 56%. And um, yeah, we're going to look at the engine horsepower. So we might be able to find it on this page here. 138. It's not bad. It's pretty good. So I'm just going to sit here until the harvester is full, or, or close to full. As we know, a full harvester load is just over half a trailer load, so uh, we're going to be about 80%. That will probably do it. We've been up and down a couple of times, so let's just see how full that is. Yeah, it must be about 70%. So once this field has been completed, we actually do have other fields to harvest as well. I don't think we're going to go straight into the harvest necessarily, um, because we also do have another field to, to re-drill. And I also cut that grass field in the previous episode, which we really should do something with. So uh, yeah, there's many options, many different things that we can do. 3%, 2% left. I can't keep up my foot to the floor. Right. Yeah, I don't know if that sounds picking up in the video, but uh, yeah, my accelerator pedal has started to squeak. What is it with my stuff and squeaking? It's weird. I'm going to have to get some WD 40 on it. But it, it sounds like a, a trapped mouse. Well, we are 99%, we're going to have to go. Otherwise, it means driving the crop for the final 1%. In fact, I think it's time for a time lapse. Well, there we go, that is it pretty much finished. We did still have a tiny piece left in the harvester. I am not too sure what we're doing with that. Palletizer refill with two bags due to saving sink. Mm, nice. And lots of harvest income. I must ask him what that is. Um, unless we can see, actually, we might be able to uh, see. Ah, it is, it's the pallets. It, it, the, the, we had those. Um, 
the, those pellet pallets from the previous episode. And he's putting them into the sell point. So I can only imagine that there was like a, a daily limit which was preventing us from selling them. It's weird. Anyway, uh, we did sell a lot in the previous episode. Yeah, if I can just see the um, 62. I think I'll take this up to the store. Then we can unload in the store. Instead of bringing the trailer all the way down here again. Just to take it back. So if we, I don't know if we can... Um, can we not put that in actually? That's going to be problematic. I'm surprised you can't put the, uh, the auger in. Or the conveyor in. Yes, yeah, not the auger. Well, I'll see if I can get there. It might be a bit of a challenge. I'll go as far as I can do before we start taking trees down. This is actually quite a good space, just here. So we'll put the, uh, the harvester just there. We'll bring the trailer alongside. And we do own the trailer, so it's going to be useful for other jobs as well in the future. Right, let's hope there's no traffic. It's not the ideal place. If it was real life, we'd probably be blocking uh, quite a few people from getting through. So that's another 6,000 litres. Not bad. Uh, where's Chainsaw? Possibly moved on to a new job. Well, that was leased anyway, so that can be returned. I've gone and sold this, and then we'll head back down to the farm for the first time today. don't know if anybody's played on Truckers MP recently, um, but I was on the, uh, the Jewersburg Road, as usual. You know, I, I only go on it because it is so amusing. I would never go on it if I was wanting to play seriously, because it's, it's almost guaranteed that something's going to crash into you. I have driven it before and not been crashed into it. It's amazing. There's been some near misses, but uh, no, there's been quite a few map changes, map adjustments, and uh, we're on the road that goes into Jewisburg from the junction where the new traffic lights are. When you get to the fuel station, which is now a service station, there's some uh, speed bumps on the road, and uh, it's quite fun to uh, show off the physics of the game. The way that the wheels go over the speed bumps, it is very impressive. You can see the suspension working. It's uh, fun. It is it's good, and it has slowed people down. It's pretty good. If only they put more speed bumps, like all over the CD road. The whole length of it, just a speed bump every now and then. Wow, there'd be, there'd be lorries flying everywhere. And lots of people rapidly braking. Oh, and not to mention the amount of people who would be rear-ending the one in front. The other noticeable change was that the repair shop had moved. Um, because everyone used to pull out into that main road, which was actually the same way as if you were going to uh, a depot or the garage. And, uh, yeah. It was just causing chaos, but they put it around the corner. It's it's an improvement, kind of. It, it's not great, but then again, um, obviously they, they've tried to uh, tried to improve it, and it has improved it a bit for those people who are trying to go to the different depots. But for people who are trying to go in service, it's just like a a, a massive scrum. Everybody drives into each other trying to get in and out. Uh, I was there. Well, a while ago now, actually, a week ago, and it was absolute chaos. But then again, I think you've just got to accept that Calais and Jewisburg are both places which you just shouldn't really go in uh, in, a, in multiplayer. The multiplayer server is so good if you avoid those areas. So back onto the farming simulator topic. As you can see, we've got all these fields ready to go. They have all fully grown. So we can have a, a big harvesting session. Just wondering where Chainsaw got to. I think he might be doing some work for the cows, possibly. Let's just see. Yes, he is doing a total mix ration. He's making a mixture. We actually should have quite a few good things in here now. We have straw and hay. And well, we did have silage bales in that field over there. We, we probably do need to make a bit more in the way of silage bales, but we do have plenty of silage. It's just bales are good for mixing. But you can just do a full bucket load instead. Let's 
So, let's just put that there for now. I think it might actually be quite useful if we do have a conveyor belt in the silage pit. Because then I could um, move some of this in trailers. It is ready to open, so we have over half a million litres of silage. It's impressive. The Scorpion has made it to here, so I'm going to load up a trailer. I suppose the one which is there is the obvious one to go for. And we don't need so much. We don't, we don't need half a million litres for our own cows. So I might as well sell the first load. Well, actually, no, I don't think I will use this trailer because it's not very big. It looks big. But compared to the one on the lorry, it's actually about half the size. So we'll bring the uh, the MAN round, or the man. I do get comments about the way I say that. I have heard more people call it MAN than man, but it really, it really doesn't matter. Call it what you want. Right, okay. This is the pellet hall, which we were in in the previous episode for a long time. That was a, a long recording session took a while. There's my bales, or the sausage roll as I've now called it. Yep, the sausage roll for several reasons. It looks like a sausage and it rolled away. Two reasons to be precise. Oh, and it attacks me as well. Here is chainsaw with bales. It is a very steep, tight corner that. It's, uh, I suppose it's actually, it's a fine if you're approaching from the other angle. Gotta go the other way. I have the trailer. We are ready to load. I should put it there. Yes, yeah, so this trailer is, I think, 79,000 lead capacity, so it's gonna be quite a chunk. It's gonna be a nice bit of income. But of course, as usual, we don't get paid until midnight unless I take it to a, a lower paying sell point, which we don't need to do. The BGA is good, providing we own it. Which we don't, so well, we should do. Yeah. Well, we should really start off with it. We do in Sandy Bay. Well, it's pretty obvious that we don't have the buy about bucket. It's such a good bucket to have. Something's out of balance though, because it doesn't take quite as many bucket loads as this to load a, a lorry like this. I've seen it done many times in real life. Obviously it takes it, it does take a lot of bucket loads, but uh, not as many as this is going to be. I think the capacity of this bucket maybe should be something like 5,000 instead of 2,500, 2,600. Maybe 4,000 litres. Don't know. Something needs tuning. Okay, finally, we're almost there. It has taken me a long time to get to this stage. Next time we'll probably use the Biobus bucket or a conveyor belt. I do like the bucket though. The bucket is good. So, I think we're about 93% full. It shouldn't be too many more loads. And as for the uh, not only the BGA problem, I think we'll probably just buy it and then add the money back in, because you don't you don't buy your sell point in real life. That's just weird. You don't say I'm off to go and sell this, but I'm gonna have to go and buy the business which is buying it from me first. How are we doing then? Is that good? Yes. Wow. Timing is good. So. Let's head over there, pull that down, retract the boom, and we will take a look at the BGA price. I think it was something like 100 and... Ooh, look, colourful. Chainsaw is drilling the field. Um, yeah, I think it's 170,000. 
Oh dear, that consumed nearly all of our money. Well, 100, 192, 527 is going to have to be added back in. Without a doubt. Get it sheeted over because it will probably blow out. And we'll get this thing turned around. In our incredibly tight yard. Why, Silver Birch, must you be there? Good. Okay. So, yeah, that's the last lorry I load with a standard bucket. I think going the way we usually go, up through the forest, is going to be the best way. Possibly the only way. Yes, well, we could go the long way, but that would be silly. It's made it quite light on the front wheels. Possibly a bit too much for it. Although this is super truck, and it, it never seems to struggle at all, horsepower-wise. We can absolutely fly with this thing. Going back to my relatively boring discussion about the size of the bucket, I, I think I'm going to go back on what I said. I think the bucket was right. Uh, this, this, the capacity of this is, is pretty big. The trailer is bigger than most, which is good, but it just when you're doing something like that, it makes it feel like something is out of proportion, which it is. The trailer capacity is, but couldn't do without it really. There's the drill, just over there, drilling what was the rye field, I think it was. Yes, I can't really control this, uh, and then the BGA was next door, so exactly the same area. Is it going to be that we have to conveyor belt it up into there? Maybe. Possibly. We'll see. We'll, we'll just uh, we'll reverse up to it and see what it does. Hopefully it says sell. Ooh. It's going to be problematic though, isn't it, for the doors? Yes, the doors just sort of decided to close themselves. Maybe if I go back, open the doors. No, it's not going to work. Okay. Typical. We're going to have to sort out a conveyor belt system or use the buyer belts bucket in the next episode. I'm going to part this here. In the next episode we'll have the money back as well. 192,000. Must get the figure. And then we can start to make some pretty serious money. So, we're going to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching, everybody, as usual. I really do hope you've enjoyed the video. And, um, yeah, until next time, see you again very soon. Bye for now.